All right, 4116, welcome in. This is our last team of the evenings. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. Let us know about your own. That's a slick looking machine you got there. All right, howdy, I'm back. Uh, I'm Nate. Uh, so yeah, no, been working on it. Good bit, it's been real fun. Um, this year, uh, actually for the challenge, we use the same frame and um, the same, uh, mostly the same everything um, from last year, but we changed, we took off the uh, lift that we had last year, put in a claw, quickly 3D printed a um, uh, claw to fit the uh, pixels, and uh, set up a new camera mount and, and airplane. This video on fun is made possible by viewers like you and also the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more in order today. Um, and then after we bring it up. So right now we're lining up and quickly grip it. Now we go over and we can put it onto the board. Yeah. Uh, struggling just a little. Um, so we chose a short arm uh, just temporarily, just because of the 30 hour build challenge. Um, actually, initially, we were not prepared for this um, because um, we were drafted for this all of a sudden. So um, we had no um, foresight of this uh, challenge happening to us. Um, but we go with the flow. So, yeah. Can you walk us through some of the other mechanisms real quick? Uh, yeah. So, um, so right here. Um, this is the uh, plane launcher. It's it uses a um, a rubber band loaded against a servo. You can release it. Oh. Did you go the wrong way? Yeah, try releasing it. <laughs> okay, so that did not launch very well. <laughs> um, but yeah. Usually it would go over there. Uh, <laughs> that's that's still not in any of the zones. <laughs> yeah. Um. So it's uh you it's done using a servo. Um. Uh. It has it. It holds a um the end of this rubber band right here. Um. On the back. And when we press a button, it moves. Um. It it moves uh um rotates this way. So it releases the rubber band, it shoots it out. One of our original ideas for launching the plane was to have uh, four wheels moving in sync. So that way we could uh, launch it with uh, uh, the rotation of the wheels. However, the problem with that is there was way too much friction and even putting in 70 amps into a 6,000 RPM motor uh, hardly ever got it to turn, so uh, we switched that. Um, though even our even though our robot may be small and a little simple, I feel like our strong point is our uh, programming. Um, in the programming, we have a trigger um, for the uh, uh, for the teleop, uh, which basically takes the current orientation of the robot uh, using the gyro and makes all of the robot's movements um, uh, coordinated to the um, coordinated to the robot. So I can show you here. I you better hold these parts. Uh, so you're essentially switching between field centric and robot centric between yeah. these two? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah that pretty much sums up the robot for this challenge. So your team coming in uh, in the last minute, uh, going through this on here, uh, I got to ask you on this. Uh, we kind of alluded to this yesterday too. Uh, what were your expectations starting this and just being thrown into the mix? And what have you learned most from this challenge that you're going to play during this interstate season? 
Uh, we weren't expecting to get a whole lot done. We expected to get a simple claw, find out how to launch a plane, and that was pretty much it because we didn't have anything planned for the 30-hour challenge. We weren't, like, working ahead. We were just kind of working on the spot. Uh, but, yeah, like he said, we didn't have too big of expectations coming into this because we didn't really expect to be here in the first place. Uh, so we just wanted to be able to figure out different scoring methods and which how to do said scoring methods. So the claw would be one of them and probably going to switch over different arm lengths and different types of ways to move the arm. And... But yeah, no, this very well could be one of them, uh, one that he developed, uh, just a claw that's able to move up and down linearly using two servos on wheels. And then another thing we might switch over to is a dual or triple jointed arm to just go on to the board. So we have a couple questions from uh, chat coming in. We'll grab those. Uh, of course, we want to give teams time to also uh, practice on the field before we start our matches at 6 p.m. Eastern. So let's go ahead and grab a couple questions. All right, I have a question from even Steven. What are your plans for the autonomous period? Oh, uh, we do have all autonomous periods. Um, currently, uh, all we all we're doing is moving into the zone from uh, from uh, from uh, moving into the backstage from any position. But in the future, we could um, maybe throw a pixel or two onto the uh, backdrop and then park in there. All right, we're going to let these teams get back to work here, but let's give 41 uh, 16 a huge round of applause. Coming in, doing a phenomenal job here. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in first scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.